you know, you're going through so many trials and um, I just, besides praying, yeah, I do pray, but sometimes, you know, when I thought, well, Lord, you know what I need and you know whatever, you know, if I, I feel that tug and I thought if there's a song that touches me and I know that, you know, I need to reach out for you and to me, I feel like that was the perfect song, yeah. and uh, and I'm re I was re reaching out to him for more strength to go through whatever I need to go through, because I'm willing. I'm willing to face my trials, and because uh, if I can't do those right now, what's going to happen here down the line? You know, where it gets harder and harder. So I, <clears throat> I just want to thank God for um, always keeping me on my toes, <laughs> and. Uh, and, I, you know, um, I'm the type of person, and I've had other people had come to me and said, I haven't heard you brag, because I used to always say that, you know, I don't need to brag about God. Well, <laughs> there's one thing that I have not mentioned, and it keeps coming up because uh, of certain things I'll let you know. Okay, it was around my birthday, a week after my a friend took me to David's Burgers. I got a chicken sandwich, and I have this partial, you know, and, and I took them out, wrapped them, I didn't have a container, I wrapped them in a napkin and laid it there on the table, mistake, I should have put it in my purse, and totally forgot about it, and uh, later I thought, okay, um, I need to, you know, put, I remembered, and I grabbed, we were cleaning the table, and I grabbed some fries that she had left, and I said, Leah, let me take them to my dog, he loves fries, so uh, <clears throat> I put them in my purse, and I thought that I had put the partially in there. When I got home, they were not in there. And so I called her. I said, Brenda, would you look in your car? Because she had took me there and see my purse fell out and, you know, my partial fell out in your car. Yeah, yeah, I will. She did. Looked everywhere. Nothing. I looked everywhere under my car seat, everywhere. My purse, nothing. And so I just gave midnight the french fries. And um, two days went by, three days, four days. And uh, I like, called the dentist, okay, do you guys, you'll need to make me a new one, okay? And so they made an appointment for me for the following week. And I was praying in the meantime, you know, that won't be so, as costly as it was before. And so I was at Walmart, and I only went to get enough things for two bags full. And I always kind of know where I park, because I park in the handicap area. I could not find my car, and I was like, where is the car at? So I got my keys, and I thought, okay, I'll open the trunk, and that'll pop up and show me where it is, because daytime, you can't see the lights. There, oh, there it is, you know, so I go over there. I go, well, since the trunk's open, I'll put the bags in there, two little bags, and uh, close the trunk, went home, opened the trunk to get the bags, and I noticed another bag there, and I go, what is this? Guess what's in the bag? My partial was in the bag. Now you tell me, how did he get there? God, it's a God thing. I called Brenda right away. I go, Brenda, guess what? And I told her, she goes, oh my God, that's a God thing, Linda. I, go, I know, I know. I said, I, I just can't believe these things. You know, I said, oh God, you're always coming through for me, always. And I, I oh, I was so happy. You know, I called the dentist, I said, cancel my appointment. I got my teeth. He goes, where were they? I go, in my, in my trunk. How did they get there? I don't know. God put them there. <laughs> so anyway, I just had to share that because that, you know, things like that happen to you. Well, somebody told me the other day, why do things like that happen to you and not me? I go, it's not, I said, things do happen to you, you just got to brag, okay, God wants you to brag on him, things that he does, that's why I, he knows that I'd like to brag on him, so I, you know, he allows little things to happen, I'm not just saying I'm special, I'm just saying that I, I just like to brag about what God does, I mean, so many things, y'all know about the phone thing, okay, remember the phone in the back of the car, how did he stay there, all, all those curves and all that, you know, because he knew I was going to brag about him. He did that for me. I'm like, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for loving me and doing those things for me. And, and I just keep on doing so I can keep on bragging on you. And I, I, just, I just love the Lord. I, I feel the strength. I feel the strength from him. And I feel the strength from you people too. And I, I just want y'all to know that I appreciate every time that y'all do pray for me.
praise the Lord for being here today. I appreciate God. I appreciate God for uh, Bible study this morning. That that I came in is what I needed. Not that I was down or anything. So I kind of woke up this morning and I felt a joy down on the inside. It wasn't like, hey, but I can feel it. I could feel it. And uh, I praise God for that. You know, uh, and it's not like everything is uh, hunky dory, but God is real, you know. And I appreciate God. Uh, when you were uh, in Bible study, this scripture had came to me for we, uh, 2 Corinthians 4, and let's see, I'll go to what is 7. I'll, I'll start at 7. For we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Hallelujah. Praise God. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Hallelujah. Always bearing about in the body and dying in the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifested in our body. I praise God for that. I just thought about when you were uh, teaching this morning, and I just thought about how sometimes trouble come, you know, and uh, I heard somebody mention one time before about how they, uh, when they didn't have Christ, and they leaned to themselves, you know, which is being depressed or stressed out or worried, you know, because that's all they had to lean upon. But until Christ came in their life, they began to lean on belief and trust, you know. So I praise God today because of Jesus Christ in my life. I thank God for just uh, loving me. Uh, I thank God for helping me. Hallelujah. I appreciate God for just being in my life. I'm so grateful to God for saving me. I am so glad. I am so glad. Trouble come, but this song said, but it don't last always. It don't last always. Just like there's a beginning of something, there's an end to it. Hallelujah. I praise God today because he is my beginning and he is my end. Hallelujah. He's my in-between. Hallelujah. I praise him for today. I magnify him today. I glorify him today. I just praise him. I just magnify him. My soul loved Jesus. Yes. 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 Amen. 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 Well, I'm just thankful to be here, and I'm thankful I, I have my mom and dad uh, through here today, and I'm thankful uh, I have a brother and sister, and I'm thankful uh, I have all my family. You know, I appreciate things in, uh, remember hearing about different brothers from the past talking about, I think Brother Souders, it was either Brother Souders or another elder brother of the past talking about 
someone had got up and would get up and would just go on and on and he would have that spirit of charity and and uh, I think it was Brother Souders and never never seemed to really have a point or really give anything out but the Lord just would not let him do anything about it till one day um, that brother gave a message on I want to think the rings as far as a wedding was concerned and it was a great great revelation to him and uh, he got something from that are we thankful today though that we get to hear these wonderful things in, in here we've got beautiful treasures that we have an opportunity to have a, a part in today I'm uh, I hear I come here I'm excited if you see me a little bit uh, overwhelmed right now it's just I feel that spirit today I feel that that blessed Holy Ghost and we can come in here and there is trials and tribulations as brother painter was talking about downstairs and uh, how those are to work in us but bless the Lord we have that hope also we have that hope to be able to reach out and say thank you Lord we're not as most people out here that don't have that hope but we have Christ Jesus as our Savior we can lift up our hands you know we know we look up our at the hills from whence cometh our help I'm so thankful to have that today we have something here that we can move forward in and um, I was just sitting there and so many different things were going over my mind different songs um, but the scripture and I'm not gonna take a lot of time here but um, it does says in Psalms in Psalms 30 and 5 this is referring to, to the Lord's anger but you know I was thinking about how brother Smith has related and brother Linger talked about years ago uh, in relation to the different kinds of judgments you know investigative and corrective and for his anger in Psalm 5 or 30 and 5, for his anger endureth but a moment. Well, sometimes, you know, as a parent, when we're helping our children, we're helping them to grow, you know, we're teaching them different things. Sometimes they fail those tests. They don't, you know, we may have taught them the material. We may have taught them about do this in public, don't do this in public, or this is the way you act at the table. But we have some displeasure when they haven't sometimes got that lesson. We don't say, well, that's it. You're never going to listen to it. You're never going to get it. Forget it. We just continue to go over it. But we might be stern with them. So, But it says, his anger endureth but a moment. There's times when I know more than once, I appreciate Brother Painter admitting, I'll admit too, uh, you know, it's like, hey, my name is Phil Fisher. I've got a problem. You know, um, that's why I'm here at church, right? This is, this is our AA meeting right here. We're trying to overcome that flesh. And, uh, and the Lord definitely says, don't do that. Or for me, he might say, really, again? You know, but that's all right. We're keeping on keeping on. We're keep moving on. But for his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night. You know, how many times has there been uh, those trials and tests that, whew, and maybe going on right now in many of our lives that I got no solution, no answer. I have no idea how this is going to be corrected or how this is going to be fixed or or what even the next steps are but all we can do and it's <laughs> that but but we have a hope that we can get on our knees and raise up our hands if we've lost a tooth if we have lost our keys if we don't know where the money's coming from if whatever the situation is we have a heavenly father to call out on and we have that hope that we can say God I need you today Lord Lord it's dark outside when we go out those doors, when we, when we see, we scroll through, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Fox News, CNN, wherever you're looking at, it is just dark, depressing, bleak. Everything you see, oh man, it's crazy. But that is not our hope. That is not our hope. Our hope is in our Savior, Jesus Christ. And to have that vision to see a restored church. Now that's something we're shouting about. That's something to get excited about. In this world right now, they're happy that the Big Ten is going to be playing football this season, and everyone's so happy about that. Well, you know what I'm happy about? I'm happy I get a chance to come in here and be lifted up with my brothers and sisters. I'm happy to be able to come in here, and we are, hey, we're having church. Just a few months ago, we were calling each other, are we having church? Are we having church still? You know, what are we doing? Well, I guess we have that Bible study on Thursday night, which was great, but there was a time when, I mean, that was definitely in a time of uncertainty. I've never known of a time in my life like that before where it's like, um, I mean, I, what do you do? I mean, it's just, you know, all we could do, and thankfully we had that opportunity to say, Lord, 
I don't know the future, but you do. I don't know what's happening tomorrow, but you do. I get a chance to rest back in his arms and just say, God, Jesus, take the will. You, you need to take the will because I don't even know how to drive anymore right now. You please lead me and guide me in this path. But it says here, in his favor is life, weeping may endure for a night. How many times have you been on your knees? How many times have I been on my knees? And just crying out to God and saying, Lord, I need a touch. Lord, I need your direction. Lord, I, 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 don't, I don't even know. I don't have any of the answers. Right now, we've got some, some fellow brothers and sisters in the body of Christ that, that are calling out. We're calling out today. Brother Bud needs a touch. Brother Bud needs a deep touch. And, and do we believe that God can do it? We know he can do it. We know our God is more than able to do that. We don't know his will in this. But, as Brother Smith had said, and we know we do believe, it's God. If you, can, if you would just, I know you can, if you would make it a part of your will, Lord. If you would just go ahead and do this, God, how amazing, how amazing of a testimony. I, I, I'd be willing to run around the church. I'd be willing to say, hey, my brother got lifted off that bed. Let me tell you, the doctor said no, but God said, oh, yes. They may, they may say, they may give you the worst sentence. They may give you the worst, what is it, at a hospital? I'm blank right now with a doctor. Diagnosis, scenario, I'm sorry, you got no hope. Hey, listen, back in that day, in Jesus' day, when you were a leper, it was over. You were done. You were, you were not a part of what was going on everywhere else. You were in a leper community, and you were just biding your time and hoping for the mercy of others that you might get some scraps. And you were just waiting to die. That is, that is what your life was as a leper. You had nothing. Well, that day that those ten lepers came and Christ healed them, he changed, I mean, he turned, their, literally, they turned their life around, gave them a new lease on life. And that one came back and said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, let's be that one today. Thank you, Lord. I was lost and dead in sin. I don't care if I was born in this church or not. I was born, shaping in iniquity, Born in sin and shaping in iniquity. I had a, 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 a sentence of death on, on me. That was the, the moment I began to breathe, the moment I began to die. But thank the Lord, that's not where it ended that day. God gave me a chance by hearing the word of God come across a pulpit just like this. was able to convict my heart for me to say, you know what, I need that Jesus. I need that Jesus. Do you need that Jesus today? You may have asked for him to come into your heart and receive salvation. You may have received that blessed Holy Ghost, but we need Him more today. I need Him more in my life. I need Him more in my life. I want more of Jesus and less of me. I want to look in that perfect law of liberty and go, wow, that's Jesus. I don't want to go, oh, man. Whoa, 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 man. What happened there? Whoo, years haven't been kind. But that's all right. That's all right. Today I've got this, today this outer shell may be decaying. But I have a hope, Brother McGowan, that inside, though, there's life. That blessed Holy Ghost has been put down deep inside. And that's, I don't care. Though the skin worms eat this flesh, in this flesh, I will see my Creator. I will see my God. I will lift up His name. He is worthy of all praise. All worthy of all praise that man can give Him. We have a hope, saints. We're not with one without hope. This, word is, this world is lost and undone, and there is darkness everywhere. But thank God, guess what? We are the light of the world. Right. A city that's set on a hill cannot be hid. 8101 Colonel Glenn, I want to just say this to you. I'm, I'm, I mean, this is not a challenge. I'm just, I'm just telling you. It is up to us. We are the called in this city to be that light. It's our calling. Whether you were born here, whether you happened in here and, and, and heard this message, whether you've been apart forever, whatever it would be, it doesn't matter. It's our calling here. Right now, this is our calling. Those that are in my earshot, it's our calling to be a light in this world, to be a light in Little Rock. And we have something worth sharing. We have something to say, you know what? Let me tell you, you have never been to a service until you've come to my service. You don't believe me? Come try me. Come try me. It's amazing. 
we got some crazy people there. And I'm one of them. You, you heard that term, holy rollers? Let me tell you, we still got them. We still believe. We don't, well, I was going to say we can mess up our hair. But anyway, I mean, some of us can still mess up our hair. It don't matter. We'll take off our jacket. We'll, 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 we're willing to sh- jump and shout, right, Sister Tally? We still got that Holy Ghost, that life down inside. And it's worth living for. See, uh, you know, a lot of times people say, well, I'll die for that. Well, it's, it's harder sometimes to live for it. It's harder to say, you know what? I'll go, Lord. As David came up there against Goliath, when, when there, I mean, there was an entire army. But they're like, I ain't going. You going? Mm-mm. You see how big that guy is? I ain't going out there. No, I'm going. Oh, mm-mm. You know, next. Meanwhile, David comes along. What did he say about my God? He, he said he's not able. He's, he said he's a chump. My God, I know he didn't say that. I mean, you know, I don't know if David did the whole thumb thing. I'm just saying, though. No. Just trying to get the point across. David said, no. No, and that's what we have to say today. This world is tearing down everything that we hold dear when it comes to what we believe about our God, what we believe about our Savior Christ. Well, let me tell you, today it says, we say no, no more. That is our Savior who died, gave his life to give us that blessed Holy Ghost. I will stand for him. We will lift his name up. Not trying to, you know what? I'm not trying to offend anyone, but if my Christ offends him, I can't help that. I can't help that. He died for me. I'm willing to live for him. I want to lift him up here today. How about you, saints? Listen, there's that song, and I don't, I'm not saying that we're down, but, but you know, there, obviously Paul got to that point, and we're all striving to be at that point where we can glory in our tribulations, as Brother Painter related to. Right now, I don't, you know, I'll go, whoa, all right, man, that was fun. Man, give me another, Lord, give me another, Lord. I, I don't, I don't yet. I mean, sometimes I'm like, oh, come on, Lord, give me five minutes. I mean, whoo, I'm not as young as I once was, Lord. It's like walking up those steps. Come on, Lord, give me, give me, a, little, give me a little time. But we're getting there, little by little, line upon line, precept upon precept, here little, there little. We're getting some of those stronger spiritual muscles. We're saying, all right, Lord, all right, Lord, add a little small weight. Come on, Lord, just a little bit more. You know, I think of that um, about the... the um, the old story about that cross, you know, you know, when the, when the man finally goes, boy, I've been dealing with that forever. And then he goes, "Woo! I'll take that little one right there. That looks like a doozy. And then they go, oh, you mean yours? The one you've had all along? Well, it's time, though, for me to say, you know what? All right, Lord. Put a little bit more on there. God, you know, you, as you're investigating me, as you're correcting me, as a good father, Lord, I want to I wanna keep a good spirit. I want to, but you know what I got to do? I got to get my mouth open under that spout and say, Lord, I need some of that Holy Ghost. I need that wonderful spirit so that it can continue to soften me and I don't get hard. I've been watching a show about, um, not metalworking, but it's basically like metalworking, but they're fashioning out tools or fashioning out swords, different things like that. And it's been very, forging, thank you. It's been very interesting. And the lessons that you can take from that Number one, if you don't get the right kind of metals, you can't just make some good tools with any type of metals. I mean, you may make, a, you may make something that looks like a tool, but it's not functional. And then whenever they're heating it up a certain way, if they're not careful, and they're beating it on it, they're going to have little mars and things. Well, I know my Heavenly Father. He knows what He's doing. But I want to be uh, malleable. I want to be able to be worked. I want to be the good type of material so that whenever He is... Put me in that fire. I'm not going, woo, get me out of here right now. Because you know what you can do? You can quench it. You can put in that oil. And you can do it too soon. Maybe you didn't get it hot enough. And it doesn't temper that weapon like it's supposed to or that tool. And so next thing you know, you try using it, and it's going to break. I don't want that today. Uh, God, if I need to stay in that oven, whoo, well, Lord, grant it. Lord, help us. Help us all to know that this is our calling because this is what's going to make it to where we can be that witness to others. Those tribulations we go through, then you're able to say, if someone else, mom, loses their tooth, you can say, hey, I have been there. But let me tell you, my God is the dentist from on high, and he will supply a tooth in the trunk of your car. <laughs> First, Linda Nolians. I don't know. I mean, she should have a book herself. You right? 
in Psalm 30 and 5, in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night. <clears throat> I'm glad that doesn't say weeping may endure forever. <laughs> that, that would change that scripture a lot right there. But it doesn't. It says weeping may endure for a night. It just means in that time of darkness, in that time of trouble, in that time when you don't know exactly what to do. But what does it say? It doesn't stop right there. It says, but joy cometh in the morning. There is hope. Joy cometh in the morning. And that, think about this. That's that light that we're shining forth. Christ is that morning sun. He is providing us that, that light that we need. And someday when that sun gets up at its full zenith, there's not going to be any more variableness of turning in us. There'll be no darkness in our life. We'll be able to stand up and there'll be no more judgment on us. We'll be able to shine before the world and say, that's all right. Dear God, no matter what they do, Lord, bless them. Have mercy on them. God, lay this sin not to their charge. They don't know any better. That's what we're striving here today for, to get closer to him. And I'm so thankful to be a part of a church that understands that, that understands that we need those tribulations. It's not a, well, bless the Lord. You can come in here and God will just pour blessings from on high. Hallelujah. You'll have $400 bills and they don't even exist. And they'll just fall all around you when you start serving the Lord. And then you just give them right back. That was just off the spot. I just did that impromptu right there. Uh, but that's not our message, right? I'll work on a play sometime. We'll, work, we'll, keep, we'll keep that. We'll figure that out. That's not our message. We're not, we're not the name it and claim it. We're not the, whoo, I feel a Porsche coming on. The hallelujah. I don't know that you'd want a Porsche. I'm just saying, though. I mean, if the Lord, ble if the Lord blessed me with the one, I'd be okay. I'd sell it, though, because I ain't paying the insurance. But that's not, that's not what it's about. We understand that there's trials and tests. We understand that there's, there's an add to your faith. But then there's also remove, right? You know, Peter talks about removing and he talks about adding. He talks about, well, sub subtract these things from your life. God, if there be these impurities in my heart, what did, what did, what did Paul, what did David say? Created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. He knew he needed to have that heart renewed. He knew, he knew that the heart he had, not his physical fleshy heart, but he knew his heart of flesh, the fleshly nature, needed to be changed. He needed, a new, he needed a new heart. David didn't have an opportunity then before he died to see that. But bless the Lord, I believe one day after Christ resurrected, David got a chance to have that opportunity to get a new heart. And we have that new heart today with that blessed Holy Ghost. I don't want to forsake that calling right there. It's wonderful to have that. So we may be down today. Hey, but help is on the way. Dark clouds may dim your sky, but he'll answer you by and by. If we will just take that one step, bless the Lord, he'll take two. And what did David say? So I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Bless the Lord, we're not begging for bread here today. We come to a place where we're fed. We're fed from the bread of life, and we have a chance to drink from that spirit. So I'm so thankful to be here today. It's some, it's, it's, this is, I'm so thankful to be here today. I'm so thankful to be here today. This is a wonderful place to come and be with our brothers and sisters. There's burdens on our back. We're praying for those. But thank the Lord. They have a hope too. Thank the Lord. We're not praying for it. You know, if, if the finality comes to that, and I'm not speaking it away from faith, but I'm speaking it if the finality comes that we're hoping to avoid for our dear brother. Our brother is not gone without hope. We know, we know, okay, that wasn't in the, in the Lord's will day or he didn't fit that in, but, but we know, we do know this. This church, as you spoke to, this church is very well acquainted that we bury the workmen, but the work goes on. The work goes on. Those torches keep being passed. Well, bless the Lord, let's make sure that we're grabbing a hold of that baton and we're continually moving forward. We're moving forward. That message that's been hewn out, that's been given to us, 
that the road has been hoed, that we keep pressing on, saints, that we keep moving on toward that goal to see Christ and the restoration of the body of Christ. Aren't you thankful here today we have that hope? I'll, I'll take us to, um, to prayer, but I would like to make a special announcement of a, a visitor that we have. Um, uh, just know that this is not me, but I'm going to go ahead and go along with this. Sister Ann McGowan, uh, I think she's from Lone Oak, uh, guest of Wayne McGowan, member of First Gospel. Oh, a member of this church. Let's give her a hand. I was just the vessel of dishonor right then that was given this, and I went ahead and went along with it, okay? So we love you, and you know we wouldn't tease you if we didn't. So we truly, I know I can say we have, we have missed your voice. We have missed you here. So, so glad to see you there. It's an empty spot, and we feel it when you're not there, Sister McGowan. Um, <laughs> any other, uh, and I'm looking for someone. If I'm not here, I know, like, oh, no, they're going to rip me now. So th- <laughs> thank you, Brother Paul McGowan. He's the one that did it, okay? <clears throat> um, any other needs? We know we want to continue to mention Brother Bud and the Sebastopol Assembly. We'll remember Brother Dial, Brother Darren Dial, his wife. Uh, um, I think those were also in the foot. Brother Sean, oh, okay, the whole family. Well, let's, let's remember, let's remember the, the church in Jacksonville. Um, Bridget, what's that? Sister Bella Vili. let's remember, continue to remember her. Um, it's like, escape my, I'm having some timers right now. Brother, thank you. Brother Durham and Sister Durham, as they're in California, we need to remember Elder Brother Durham not doing well. Let's lift him up. Uh, and Brother Dermot and his family. Uh, who else has got a need? What's it, Chelsea? <clears throat> uh, I don't know if y'all have seen on Facebook Sister Madeline Perry and the condition that uh, they've recently found out about. Um, that family is desiring our prayers and reaching out, so let's remember her. It's uh, Brother David and Sister Krista Perry's daughter. Who else has a need that we need to lift up here? Sister Donna? Go, go, say, I'm sorry, say it again. Heart appointment. Let's pray that the doctor gives her a good report. Let's pray he says, well, you got a new heart. I don't know where it came from. And you can say, well, I know where it came from. It's at the Linda's trunk. You know, you can lift, lift up the Lord and everything. Go ahead. What, Brother Noah? Let's, let's continue to remember uh, Brother Noah. And I, I will say this uh, over the pulpit. Um, I, don't, I don't jest lightly behind the pulpit, but it is, it is part of my personality. And because I have been raised in this group of people, and I know that God doesn't make bricks, we're all individuals. And I thank the Lord that he accepts us for how we are. We all have a calling in our life. We need to understand that <clears throat> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my calling the way I can. <clears throat> and thankfully, the Lord has mercy on me anyway <laughs> you know, with his grace. So I just wanted to say that, though. But uh, I can't help it. Sometimes they just come out, and I can't. I'm like, oh, no. I can't stop that. Uh, who else has a need that we want to mention here today? <clears throat> let's remember, yes, and they'll be traveling back later today. So let's be praying for him and. And the church in Sebastopol there in Nacogdoches, thank you. <clears throat> Let's pray for Brother Ethan. He's homesick. And uh, I want to say it's very good to see Brother Daniels back in church with us today. We missed him last Sunday. So when we see you there, Brother Daniels, that, that does our heart very good. So good to see you. We, we continue praying. Did you get any report when you know about as far as when you went to the doctor? Okay, 10 4. Well, let's continue to pray for Brother Daniels. Go ahead. Two unspoken requests. Sister Boyd. <clears throat> let's remember that uh, you said a friend, right? A friend of hers, her brother-in-law, uh, had a heart transplant and is having some troubles there. So let's let's lift that prayer up for sure. Any others? I know Sister Abraham's not here. Let's remember her and Jonathan, her unspoken that she mentions. Uh, continue to remember 
the McPhees. Let's lift them up, reach out and call them and let them know. I got to call Brother John and give him a hard time. I'm missing him for sure, Strand. Or Josh and Levita and their families. Just remember them. Oh, yes, yeah, Sister Spani. Any, we just, we'll just pray for her. She's missing the day. Okay. Okay, well, let's, let's, we'll be praying for her. She looks, she's with, um, I man, I'm, I know, what's his name? Zachary, I know that. Just wanted to make sure y'all did. All right. Addie, go ahead. But we are, we're definitely going to keep paying for Brother Bud, Sister Addie. Appreciate that. Any others that we want to, Sister Painter? Remember Sister Gladys' father and the concerns he has, and remember Sister Gladys and her family and how that plays on her as well. We'll be praying for you, Sister, Sister Painter. Go ahead, Sister, Sister Sue. <clears throat> Echo Cardigan for Sister Echo Cardigan for Sister Elder. Let's continue to remember her and Sister Cindy and the family. Any others that we want to lift up here today? If the ushers will go ahead and come forward, we'll receive the tithes and offering. Sister Benique, yes ma'am. We, we appreciate <laughs> well for all I can say for Brother Painter and uh, both of us um, we just want to work in our calling the way that God has, has us and we, we take this very serious and uh, we love you all and we're just uh, you pray for us and we'll continue to pray for you it just works that way right uh, any other needs that we want to mention here today is bring before the Lord if not, if the ushers will go ahead and come, folk, who? Brother Matt's point to Sister Tally. Let's pray for Sister Tally. Let's lift her up as well. If the ushers will come forward and go ahead and stand and take these needs before the Lord. Let's call on our Savior. Oh, Heavenly Father, dear Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy, your guidance, dear Jesus, your love. Oh, God, you are worthy to be praised, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord, to be able to come to you, God. Thank you, Lord, oh, Jesus, to know you, Lord. Oh, Jesus, you are a great physician, Lord, our mighty God, our counselor. God, we come to you as a needy people, Lord, as your children with these great needs, dear God. But you are bigger than all of our needs, Lord. You know each and every one, dear God. We bring them and we lay them before you, Lord, our Savior. Oh, God, help us right now, Lord Jesus, to have more faith, Lord. To know that no matter the situation, God, you'll see us through. You'll take us through each and every one, Lord. And lift us up through it all, God. Oh, Jesus, touch Brother Bud right now. Dear God, Lord Jesus, we call on you, God. Yes. We're passing by, Lord. We're reaching out for the hem of your garment, Lord. To touch you, to feel that anointing spirit, Lord. To feel that healing power, God. Oh, Jesus, touch him right now, Lord Jesus. Please, Jesus. Oh, God. Cover that assembly right now, Nacogdoches, Lord. Jesus, let them feel it, Lord. Let this be a, an amazing service today, Lord. Sweep over them right now, Lord Jesus. All these requests have been lifted up before you, Lord. Brother Durham and his family, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, so many needs that we have, Lord, but we trust in you. We have faith there, God. And Lord Jesus, as we call on you as our Father, Lord. Oh, God, touch each and every one for the remainder of this service, Lord. Oh, God, you know what we all need, Lord. Fill our cups, God, till they're overflowing, and we can take it out to this city and bless them. 
Jesus, wonderful Savior. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
Well, you know I'm convinced of that. And uh, I'm convinced of that because I've had good teachers and I've had experience. And so the, uh, let's see here. I know that God will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory because the Bible says so. And with that, I have great confidence today. I have uh, knowledge that all things work together for the good. To them that love the Lord and are thee called according to his purpose. And that's you and me. We are called according to his purpose. You may not feel like it all the time. Sometimes you wonder, well, what is the purpose? <laughs> what? Why do I have to go through this? Why am I suffering? Why do I have to deal with this situation, this person, this difficulty, this health condition? Why, why, why? And you know, the truth of the matter is, it's okay to ask why. In fact, you should talk to God every opportunity you get. Don't be afraid to ask him any question that comes to your mind. He's God. He ain't afraid of your questions. I may be. <laughs> I'm sure you could ask me a few questions and, and I'd be a little nervous. But I'll tell you this, I'm not afraid to tell you I don't know. Uh, I'd much rather tell you I don't know than to, to lie about it. You know, some people preach a lie like it's the truth. That's sad, isn't it? That's sad when they tell a lie like it's the truth and then people get confused and the Bible says you believe a lie and you're damned. Well, we don't want that. We don't want that at all. What we want to do is we want to live. We want life eternal. We want uh, salvation, not damnation. We want to be saved from our trials and tests. We want to be perfected in this process. And the uh, It's such a privilege. I really enjoyed Brother Fisher's uh, words here today and his exhortation and the liveliness and the experience, uh, the experiences, and even I enjoy Brother Fisher uh, in the way he tells the stories, and and, and uh, it's a privilege to work with him, and it's a privilege to be here and and to serve you. Uh, we do appreciate your prayers, Sister Janique, and and we love this this church. We love you people, and uh, we want everyone to feel at home and be a part. Um, of course, the best way to be a part is to take part. Take part. Give, and you'll invest in something. If you're willing to give and share, you'll, you'll feel a burden, a conviction about how things are going. And, uh, you know, you, you, uh, your testimony is very important to all of us. Um, your presence, your singing, your, your music, um, your servitude is important to all of us and what makes it so important is the fact that this is a lighthouse as has already been said this church is a lighthouse in fact uh, we we are a witness to others um, that the Lord is still on the throne and working even in the midst of all this confusion and, and frustration and and, you know, I'm not so naive to, to think that, that there aren't people here, and myself included, that don't get frustrated because we do. Um, and, again, I want to remind you that, that, that just the mere fact that you're frustrated sometimes is part of the process. I want to, uh, um, I want to share a few scriptures before we go home today. And uh, if you would, turn with me over to 2 Corinthians, the 7th chapter. Second Corinthians 7, in verse 1, the Apostle Paul, he's writing here, he says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So he's, he, you know, he's really starting to get 
personal with people and where they live and their personal lives, their endeavors, their, um, the things that they're focused on. And he's saying, look, let's cleanse ourselves from the filthiness of the flesh. And let's work on perfecting holiness in the fear of God. He said, receive us, for we have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. So there's a pretty good indication there that somebody had been talking about the preacher. You know how people do? They have preacher for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And so Paul, he's establishing here that, look, we have defrauded no one. We have corrupted no one. We have wronged no one. You know, I want to caution you. It is, preachers are easy targets. Leaders are easy targets. They're easy targets to talk about. And if you're guilty of that, stop. You can't take back the words you said, but you can stop saying them. He said, I speak not to condemn you. And, and he, he wasn't trying to, I mean, here's the thing about it. Uh, Abraham said, you will hold your peace and the Lord will fight your battle. And, and that's one thing about uh, a minister through their humility is they, they have, they, it's almost impossible for them to defend themselves. Even Jesus was, <laughs> they're, they're, placing a crown of thorns on his head. They're smiting him across the cheek. They're making fun of him. They're putting a, a scarlet robe on him. And they're mocking him right and left. And he can't defend himself. He's standing there and he absolutely is unable to defend himself. Because God said, vengeance is mine. He reserves that right. So he said, I speak not to condemn you, for I have said before that ye are in our hearts to, lie, to die and live with you. He said, great is my boldness of speech to you. Great is my glorying of you. I am filled with, with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation. For when we were coming to Macedonia, our flesh had no rest. But we are troubled on every side, without, we're fightings within, we're fears. Nevertheless, God that comforteth those that are cast down, comforteth us by the coming of Titus. He was just establishing there that tribulations are a part of the process. And it's, it kind of comes across to me that, that part of it was Paul induced because of who he was. Can you imagine walking down the street or going to visit your family, and you're a convert. Now you're a Christian convert. And your family comes along and says, I heard you're one of them. What do you mean? Well, I heard you're gathering with Paul. You know, Paul used to be a really good guy, but now since he found religion or found Christianity, now he's betrayed his heritage. Can you imagine the pressure that some of those people felt, the, 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 uh, the anxiety that some of them had just to, to go visit mom and dad? Conversion from Judaism to Christianity brought all kinds of divisions in homes and families and cities and communities. It separated probably even the chiefest of friends. And so Paul, he says, look, Great is my boldness of speech to you, toward you. Great is my glory of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation. How could he be? Because he had confidence in what he was doing, and you can too. You can have confidence today that what you're pursuing in the Word of God, the truth of the Word of God, is right. The Spirit of God that you've received in your life is right. The vision of the body of Christ that you have received is right. The understanding of the work of the ministry, uh, how it's to perfect the saints, is right. You can have confidence in those things, and you can glory in, in whatever tribulation comes from that. And so the, the thing that occurs to me oftentimes is leadership, When it, if you've worked for a good boss... Uh, then you've worked for somebody who has challenged you, right? 
You've worked for somebody who has provoked you to do more than what you wanted to do. I certainly have. I, I've worked. I've worked with people. I worked with the guy. Um, uh, his name was Warren Townsend. He was a former state auditor for the state of Arkansas, and he was constantly asking me to to produce. I was a, I'm a database guy, and so I was producing all these uh, database reports and stuff. And he was always asking, well, can you do this? Can you do this? And, you know, I got sick and tired of it. Because it, was, it seemed like no matter what I did, it was never enough. But that, my jo his job wasn't to console me. His job wasn't to make me feel good about, I mean, that was part of it. It, it, it helped me if I felt good about my job, obviously. But his job was to provoke me to do more, to get more out of me at the same rate of pay. That don't sound very good, does it? But it's the dirty truth, isn't it? Young people, listen to me. When you go work in a job, don't you expect that day one is the, is the extent of everything that you're going to do because that's just the beginning. In fact, if you're wise on your job, you'll make it so that they can't do without you. In fact, I tell them on my job, look, if you're going to replace me, you better just, you need to put out four job openings. <laughs> now, I might be exaggerating a little bit, but I, I let them know it's going to take a little bit more than one to replace me. And you know what they do? They keep pouring it on. I think it might have been Sister Tally told me this one time. If you want to find some, if you want something done, find the busiest person, because you know they'll get it done, or they'll they'll find somebody to get it done. And so leadership oftentimes will put pressure on you, and it will make you feel uncomfortable, and you'll get frustrated in the process. Let's read a little bit over here in uh, Matthew five and ten. It said, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Beatitudes. Matthew 5.11. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you, and persecute you, and, sh and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. Emphasis on falsely. For my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Hmm. rejoice because people are saying things about you that are false, that are lies. Look, I got news for you. You, know, you already know this. You cannot shut a liar's mouth. In fact, you're wasting your time to, to try. It will, it will, a liar will only shut their mouth when they're convicted for it, when they have a conviction or when there's a penalty for the process. I used to know this man. He was a habitual liar. He would lie when the truth would do better. Honestly. He would lie, 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 and he could not stop lying. A double-minded man is unstable in his, all, all his ways. And that somebody who has a lying tongue... God, the Bible says God hates a lying tongue. If, if, if your tongue is guilty of that, you need to stop. Because you're, you're drawing God's wrath at that point. He that soweth discord among his brethren. God hates those things. Stop. For your sake. Stop doing that. You're going to hurt yourself down the road. You'll ruin your reputation. The... This man would lie, 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 and you, he, it wouldn't matter. You could shame him all day long, and he'd still tell a lie. It wouldn't matter. That's not us. That's not who we are. He said, Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. So you're not alone in this. He said, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt hath lost lost its savor. If you're just getting mad and frustrated and you can't rejoice, you're losing your savor. 
You're losing your, what's grounding you. He said, shall it be salted? Wherewith shall the earth be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under foot of men. And Brother Fisher quoted this scripture earlier. He said, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. You know what that does? You know what that makes this church? It makes this church a target. If you're a city set, if you're a light set on a hill, it makes you a target. It makes you easy prey. And God help us. We live in an environment, in a society, where that's all they're looking for is an easy target. They're trying to persecute and bring tribulation on easy targets. Christians in, in our society today feel like easy targets. Oh, well, I thought you were a Christian. You're easy, you're just easy prey. And it it's it's a burden. It it hurts. It's a death. It's a sting of death to endure. Uh, Paul, how Paul said, he said to uh, to um, to suffer to be defrauded. It's a death, but it's all right because it's drawing us closer to Him. In Acts the twentieth chapter. Uh, in the 19th verse. He says here, he said, serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying and weight of the Jews. This is the Apostle Paul. He said, serving the Lord with humility of mind. That's what it takes. That's what it's going to require. It's going to require a humility. You say, well, but I'm right. I know. But you can be right, but in the wrong. Here lies Mr. Hardaway. He was killed while maintaining his right away. Oh, he was right. He was absolutely right as he sped along, but now he's just as dead as if he was wrong. You say, well, I'm right. Yes, you can be right, but you can be in the wrong. You can hold the truth in unrighteousness. God, help us all to have that humility of mind. And one more verse I want to, uh, I want to share with you, and that's Colossians 2.18. The thing about leadership, is when, and I made a statement here recently, and I stand by that statement. I stand by it today. It takes great men and women to work with great men and women. And you know why? Because a person, let's say, I mean, we could name your heroes. We could either go to sports authorities, we could go to scientists, authorities, we could go to political authorities, we could go to engineer, you know, digital engineer authorities, you name it, you pick your hero, you pick the person that you think is just the cat's meow, that's, that's got everything, uh, every tool that they need, they've got the talent, they've got the, the wisdom, you, I mean, we could, we could name the ministers, the, the ministerial authorities. Did you know that every single one of those, they have high demands, high demands, high demands. There, there's, there's no letdown. You know, like I told you today in Bible class, I'm, we're prototyping some products, and, and I'm getting pushed for certain, there's expectations. It's got to do this, and it's got to meet this expectation, it's got to serve in this way, and it's got to be dependent. And there's, there, I, can't, I can't just take one of them off and say, well, you know, we only met two of the, of the three goals. It doesn't work like that. It either is or it isn't. And so the, the anticipation and the expectation for something to be right is, requir requires a tremendous amount of humility because at some point I'm going to be told, no, that's wrong. That's not good enough. Try again. That's not good enough. Try again. I'm sorry, but it failed. Try again. 
I'm sorry, but you've got to keep going back. You've got to come up with a better way. You need to think about it a little different. You've got to make it so, you know, make it in a different way. Did you know that all of those things at times are absolutely frustrating? Take a, a parent with a child, tying their shoes, reading their book, uh, learning their math. I was, we were going down the road the other day, and, and I, can't, I can't even remember, but something, there was some, a math equation thrown out in the vehicle, and I, I immediately went back to whenever I was a little kid, reading 333. I was like, well, that's not 333, it's 333. You know how simple math was, because there was a concept that I didn't know at the time, that I had to, there was a law, a principle of math that I had to learn. Learning to do good is not something that's going to occur to you overnight. And it's going to be frustrating. There's going to be moments in your life where you're absolutely annoyed by the process. But once you pursue through it with humility of mind and follow your leadership, we're, we're promised a hope eternal. That's our goal. That's our objective. What a privilege it is. We see people around us all the time that have no hope. I mean, seriously, people. They have nothing going for them. Their greatest joy is who won the football game on Sunday. That's the highlight of their week. Oh, I might get entertained by it, but that is certainly not the highlight for me. I may, you know, it, some of these things may, you know, you start talking about Arkansas in a good way and, and you know, hey, I'm going to feel pretty good about it because I love this state. But that's not the highlight. The writer said that we're just pilgrims passing through. We're, we're not children of this world. We're children of New Jerusalem coming down from heaven. Didn't you enjoy feeling the Spirit of God through these songs today? Hallelujah. Aren't you happy today to know that the Word of God is here to comfort and bring you joy even in the midst of your church? And lift you up in spite of what's going on in this world. Praise God. Hallelujah. He said in the 18th verse of Colossians uh, 2, he said, Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding on the, into those things uh, he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. You know, people will make light of you for being willing to submit to a ministry. People will make light of that. What they fail to understand is even the ministry, as great as Brother Smith is, he's still willing to submit himself to a ministry. He's still willing to bring himself under subjection to a ministry. You take a professor in a college, the same thing, willing to submit himself to the authority of that university. Even as he may be brilliant, he may be an absolute brilliant scientist still willing to submit himself to the authority of the institution which gives him the power. You take a leader, the governor of this state. You know, he may be the greatest governor we ever had. I, you know, I, I reflect back, I think Mike Beebe was a good governor. But even a man as good as he was, was willing to submit himself to the authority of this nation, of this state, and subsequently this nation. Great people work with great people. But you know who, and, and let me start say this, there are great people who don't work with anybody. And I can prove that. He said, uh, he said, not holding the head in the 19th verse from which all the body by joints and bands have a nourished Nourishment ministered and knit together increases with the increase of God. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of this world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Touch, touch not, taste not, handle not, 
which all these things are to perish with the using after the commandments of men, after the commandments and doctrines of men. The 23rd verse of Colossians, 2nd, uh, Colossians 2. He said, which things have indeed a show of wisdom? Did you know that being humble is wise? Which things have indeed a show of wisdom and will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh? If you want to excel in life, you need to learn how to be humble and work with authority. If you would, I I, I mentioned, I said I'd close with that, but I want to, (laughs) famous last words, I know. Matthew 5, Matthew 25. And I'm not going to go through this, but I want to bring you back to a lesson that I'd given earlier uh, about the talents. Matthew 5, 25. Matthew 25, verse 15. And you will recall when you read through this, there are three people that we're talking about. Well, there's actually four. There's the boss, the austere man, the hard man who reaps where he sows not. Then there's the guy that got five talents. And then there's the guy that got, uh, was it two talents? And then there was a, let me start over. There was a lady that got five talents. There was a lady that got two talents. And then there was a lady that got one talent. Right? We can include, it's, you know, it doesn't matter. The principles remain the same. The person that got five, what did they do? They took their five, they put it to work. He gave them five more. The person that had two, put it to work, two more. The person that had one talent, what did they do? We all know this story. They hid it in their earth. Why? They lacked the humility of somebody telling them what to do. They couldn't stand it. The person that had one talent could not humble themselves enough to be instructed by somebody else. They were so afraid of somebody actually using their talent and them not getting credit for it that they didn't do nothing at all. This city is full of people who are doing absolutely nothing with their talents. They are that one person. They don't want the ministry to have any authority over their life. They don't want to be a part of anything. They are hiding their talent in the earth. Saints of God, that is not who we are. We do not have this worship. We do not have this congregation We are not a lighthouse set on a hill by hiding our talents. We have to let humility take a hold of our lives. We have to be willing to be used for the glory of Jesus Christ. We have to submit ourselves unto the Lord. We have to have a voluntary humility and let the ministry give us direction on how we work and labor for the Lord. Praise God. Why wouldn't you want to be that person? that has two talents and get two more, that has five talents. We all want to be productive. We all want to be successful in our endeavors. We want to have courage. We want to enter into the throne of grace boldly, hallelujah, that we might receive mercy as I read today. Hallelujah. What a privilege it is. What a joy it is to have what God has has called us to do, and to know that if we're willing to submit ourselves, we can grow and grow and grow, and at some point in our life, we'll reach perfection. Hallelujah. Woo! Trials and tests are going to come. Let them come. You know, I'm not so naive to think that I'm not going to struggle with them myself. I already know that. I have many times. But I know this. The best day serving God is... The worst day serving God is better than the best day serving the devil. So I'm not interested in that anymore. I, I, you know, I said, get behind me. I'm moving on forward. I'm either, I'm not down. I'm either up or I'm getting up. Praise God. 
All right. Hope you all have a good week this week. Continue to uphold Brother Bud and his family and the churches that he's responsible for in, in your prayers. Brother and Sister Durham, do we know when they're traveling home? We don't. Okay. Their circumstance dictates that, I suppose. Let's remember that, and Brother Ralph Durham there in that hospital, that God would speak to his mind and give him comfort. It's such a frustrating thing for families with, with their loved ones in the hospital. It's just, I'm, I, I got to spend a week, my mom landed in the hospital in July, and I got to spend a week with her, and I, I hated that she was in the hospital, but I'm so glad I got to spend time with her. I just, it, it, I, I reflect now upon it, and as, as disappointing as it was, and as near death as she was, I do consider it a blessing in that regard. And um, let's continue to pray for Brother and Sister Smith. They'll be traveling home today. That God would give him strength and her strength as they make their way back uh, to the great state of Arkansas. And the Lord would protect them and keep them safe. Sure will. Thank you for letting us know that. And if you didn't hear, he's he's still struggling with his vertigo. And you know, he's he's at a point, he's at a point in his life where the scriptures are just illuminating in his mind. And then these added burdens and, and his health. Lift him up, saints of God. We need him. And we need what God has. God has a message, and it's, he's, you know, he's, there's a fire burning inside Brother Smith that, he, that he's trying to get out for us and for the body of Christ. And you need to keep praying for him, keep upholding him, keep supporting him, keep talking good about him. And all that negative, you just go on now. Get on down the road. We're, not, we're up or we're getting up. Praise God. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if you were able to hear what Sister Holly said. She said vertigo is like looking through a kaleidoscope that's constantly moving, and you just there's no pattern, there's no there's no stopping to the the chaos that you see, and that it, it's the brain knows something's wrong, but it doesn't know how to correct it. And so let's let's pray for Brother Smith in that, particularly in that situation. All right, let's stand and be dismissed with a word of prayer and give the Lord praise. Hallelujah, Lord. We love you so much. So much, Lord. And we're so thankful today for the grace that you provided in this setting that we have, this house of worship. Saints of God and their willingness, Lord, to, to humble themselves before you and let you talk to us through them and their testimonies and their songs. We pray for Brother Smith, Sister Smith today and in their labor of love and their travels. We pray for Brother Bud and his need and his family. Brother Ralph Durham, Lord, and his need in the family, and in, in their family here, the Durham family here as well, and all these grandchildren, Lord, touch their hearts and minds and keep us in your care. In Jesus' name. All right, God bless y'all. Enjoy the week. We'll have Bible study, Brother Smith's Bible study on Thursday night, and uh, service on Sunday.